This is a part of my burn chamber. Those of you who have been watching my videos will have seen this many times. This is a catalytic converter off of a small engine. A weed trimmer to be exact. I am going to find out what happens when you put a catalytic converter inside of your diesel heater. Yes! <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome to Lord Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. In today's video we are going to install a miniature catalytic converter inside of my diesel heater and attempt to burn waste motor oil. For those of you who follow my channel you will know that burning waste motor oil in my heater is not a new thing but we've never tried it with a catalytic converter before and that's what we're going to do. Partly to see if it makes the heater work better, partly to see if it destroys the catalytic converter, and partly just because it's going to be really fun and really interesting to see what the results are. A big thanks to Dustin for not only coming up with this idea, but for also supplying the catalytic converter. This video wouldn't be happening without you, so thank you from me and from all of my viewers. I'm sure they appreciate it. A big thanks also to everyone who supports my channel, whether that's subscribing to the channel, leaving likes on the videos, or getting involved in the comments section. It is people getting involved down there that caused this video to happen, so go on down there, leave me your ideas. Next up is going to be my safety disclaimer, but before you go skipping too far ahead, be sure to stick around so that I can tell you what's in this box and what this exciting test is going to be. I'm going to be doing some silly things to this heater. I would suggest that you don't do the same. Doing what you see me do could get you injured, killed, cause damage to your property, or a complete loss of property. Now, what's inside the box? A carburetor off of a lawnmower. One of my viewers gave me the suggestion to try running a carburetor on the heater. Why? Why did it take this long to think of this? So, in an upcoming video, I am going to be attaching this to the air inlet of the heater then I imagine firing it up on diesel and then switching it over and see if we can get the heater to run off of a carburetor. This particular one does not have a choke. It has a primer set up, but it has a throttle that we can use to possibly throttle it. It should be very entertaining, even if it doesn't work. I used a pair of tin snips cut away at the muffler until I had the basic shape that I wanted. I then took this piece and put it inside of another experimental piece that I made in an earlier video. And then I used a file to get the final shape. This piece is now ready to fit inside of the burn chamber. Then we can put it all together, fire it up and see what happens. My predictions are that there is going to be too much restriction as is. The hole is this big and the catalytic converter is actually almost exactly the same size, a little bit under that size. And my predictions are that there is going to be too much restriction and that it actually might not fire up. If it does fire up, it's not going to be very happy. But we're going to give it a try this way because it's easier to test it this way and then put holes in it after. If it doesn't work, then it is to put holes in it and then plug those holes up. The last test that I did on this was running the heater without the full burn chamber. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out because uh, it was exciting. Bottom is here, so the hose clamp goes like this. I've only done this a few times before, he said as he grabs the wrong screwdriver. Okay, time to throw it back together 
and see what happens. If you take a look over my right shoulder, you will see a box that was sent to me by Viver that says ultrasonic cleaner on the side. I will be doing a video on that in the near future, so if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. For those of you who don't know, I have partnered with Viver and I have an affiliate link to a heater that is similar to the one that I will be using in this video. If you guys are interested in purchasing one of those and helping me out, you can use that affiliate link. There is also a coupon code VVS10 for $10 off or VV promo for 5% off store wide. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, all the information is in the description below. Go check it out. I've got this thing all hooked up and I'm just about to test fire it. Before I do, I just want to say that I think this is probably one of the silliest tests that I've done so far on this heater. But I also think that it will probably get a lot of attention because I know if I saw a video that was titled testing a Chinese diesel heater with a catalytic converter, I would have to click on that video. So let's press the power button and see what happens. My prediction is that it doesn't start up this time and we have to remove the catalytic converter and drill some holes in it to give it a little bit more flow. If it does start up this time around, I will be super happy that I'm wrong because that will mean less work for me. There's a bunch of smoke coming out. Oh, and it lit. It actually lit. I can hear it. Wow. I did not expect that. Let's find out what happens, folks. This is going to get interesting. Based on the smoke coming out of the exhaust, it looks like it might be too restrictive. But I don't know. Oh, it's cleaned up. No smoke coming out the exhaust at all. A little zoom in. Nice and clean. Catalytic converter for the win. 77 degrees. <laughs> oh my God, it's up to 108 already. I'm going to guess that it won't work well at full speed because it's going to cause too much of a restriction, but I was wrong about it having a hard time starting, so maybe I'll be wrong about this too. Maybe this will do the trick. Alright, so we're at setting 3. It ramped down. I've already set a five minute timer, but because these numbers are still climbing, I think what I'm going to do is uh, crank the speed up and see if the temperature keeps going up. My predictions, I was wrong last time, mind you, but my predictions are that it is going to struggle when we start pushing it in the higher settings because the catalytic converter is restricting too much flow. But let's find out. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with this number and this number when I turn it over to the waste oil mix because when I do that there will be a fair amount of unburnt gases going through it and it should produce a significant amount of heat. Alright, temperatures are still climbing in the setting 5. I'm going to crank it all the way up to setting 6 and see what happens. Five minutes has passed and it doesn't seem like anything extraordinary is happening here. It looks like the heat is restricted a little bit because our meter is beeping. It looks like the heat is being restricted a little bit based on the uh, lack of flow. I don't know why it's dropping all of a sudden. It was at 198. So, I am going to start feeding waste oil into it and we will see what happens to these temperatures. The diesel is turned off, the waste oil is turned on, but it's going to take a few minutes to actually work through the system. 
So we'll keep an eye on these numbers and see what they do. It is now burning the waste oil. The temperature here has dropped. The temperature here seems to be going up a little bit. I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes and we will see what happens. All right, folks, five minutes has passed. Not a whole lot exciting has happened. As you guys can see, the temperature is fairly stable. I'm gonna show you guys the exhaust now and show you that there's not a bunch of smoke coming out of it. So maybe the catalytic converter is actually doing something, but this temperature is actually quite restricted. So after I show you guys the exhaust, we're actually gonna turn this down to setting four and see if we get more reasonable numbers out of this. I find that quite interesting. I play with this heater a lot and I know that at these temperatures that exhaust would be showing a bunch of smoke if not for the catalytic converter. So just to show you guys we've got the line coming out of the tank into the fuel filter that's how black the oil is. This valve is on you can follow the line through to the fuel pump. It comes out of the fuel pump the oil is preheated. It goes into the preheater. It comes down and out here. Now that we've verified that the catalytic converter actually is doing something, let's turn the heat setting down to four and see if it makes a more reasonable heat. Right now, it seems as though we are just jamming a whole bunch of fuel through there. I don't know why it's not producing a whole lot of heat and it's also not producing a lot of smoke, but I have a feeling that it's actually going to work better and make more heat at the lower setting. While I was down there showing you guys the exhaust, apparently this temperature came up to 196, which is pretty reasonable, but I'm still going to slow it down and oops, that's the wrong button. Up is down, down is up. So this is 187 on the outside of the burn chamber and that is 196. We'll wait five minutes, come back and check these numbers and see if I was right. We'll see if these numbers go up or if they go down or if they stay the same. All right, folks, it has been five minutes and <laughs> I don't know what to think. The temperature here has gone up. The temperature here has gone down a couple of degrees. Let's go up one step and see what happens to these temperatures. Once again, five minute timer. Here we go. I'm not exactly sure what to think of this test, but I'm gonna let it continue to run. I've cranked it down to setting four because I would rather keep the temperature of the burn chamber up and lose a few degrees on the heat exchanger body. That way it is gonna make for a better clean, a better burn of the oil. I will let you guys know when something happens, when I add fuel or when it stops working, but as of now, this seems to be working really good. Uh, I don't know what's happening inside. If it's still running tomorrow, then we'll take it apart and take a look inside, even if it's not broken, just to uh, see what's going on. And then we'll continue running it until something odd happens. It would be really nice if what was happening here was just the restriction was making it work nice but I have a feeling that the catalytic converter is actually doing catalytic converter things, and that's why this is working as well as it is. This hoodie is actually pretty appropriate because the catalytic converter that I am using is off of an echo trimmer. So yes, once again, thank you to Dustin for uh, getting me one of those. This exhaust looks 
quite clean inside. Take a look here and see. I'm guessing the camera really can't pick up on that, so you'll just have to trust me. The exhaust looks way better than it did last time after running this long. So let's pull the heater apart and see what it looks like. I am very curious to see what we have inside here. You can see here there's a little spot of oil on the outside of the baffle. It looks like it must have come out on the bottom here. There's a little bit on the thermocouple as well. Let's pull the burn chamber out and see what is going on inside here. Somebody advised me in a previous video to put these lines over the steel line as a means of insulation. I haven't been able to tell any difference, but I leave them on there because I'm sure it doesn't hurt. Okay, so, mm hmm it fell sideways. So I may have been right and wrong. <laughs> the catalytic converter wasn't blocking the whole passage. And so that was probably allowing it to run as good as it was. If it was actually blocking off all of the flow or if it was actually making all of the flow go through the catalytic converter, I'm going to assume that it wouldn't flow enough. So I'm going to pull this out now and we'll take a look and see what's going on. I see some weird rust patterns. At least I think that's what they are. So I'm gonna try to get this out. I think I'm gonna have to, oh, maybe not. Oh, wow. Okay, I can already see there's a big buildup of stuff on the backside of the catalytic converter. Let's try to pull this out. Oh, it comes out quite easily. Oh, okay, that's not great. <laughs> So that's what the back side of the catalytic converter looks like. Inside of here isn't much better. Okay, let's take a closer look at the catalytic converter first and see what we've got going on. It looks like a lot of this stuff is just falling off. We have a fair amount of corrosion on the, oh, I was about to say we have a fair amount of corrosion on the outside of the catalytic converter, the actual metal piece, but it looks like it's actually eroded away at the catalytic converter itself. So I don't know if the camera will be able to pick up on this. Let's uh, try to get some better lighting. This is what the converter looks like after that much time. As you can see, some of the material is eroding away. That honeycomb structure should be all the way through, or wafer structure, I guess. It's not really honeycomb. I don't know if that is due to the heat or due to the catalyzing, catalyst. Yeah, whatever you call it. I assume it's because of the heat that uh, it doesn't look good. It's pretty awesome when you buy a $500 camera from a camera company and then you have to use your phone to do filming because the camera that you bought from a camera company who's been making cameras for over a decade is worse than the camera in your phone that is a iPhone 10 from six years ago. Way to go, GoPro. The media of the catalytic converter seems to be just flaking apart. The catalytic converter seemed to be doing a pretty good job. There wasn't a bunch of smoke in here. It didn't smell like smoke when I came out this morning. And it didn't smell like smoke last night at all. The exhaust was completely clear. So it seems as though it was doing a pretty good job. It just, uh, you'd have to replace it every 10 hours or so. Whatever metal they actually make this chamber out of must be pretty good stuff because pretty much everything that I've put in the chamber 
gets completely destroyed. I suppose it is directly in the flame path, but uh, yeah. The chamber has been holding up quite well and everything else that I put in there gets obliterated. I suppose I should show you guys the inside of the burn chamber because I didn't do that already. This is what it looks like in there. I don't know what to think of that. And now I'm going to split the burn chamber and we'll take a look inside. Okay. We've got a considerable amount of crud in here, not the most I've ever seen and not the least I've ever seen. It looks like it's gonna clean up pretty easily. Inside here was actually better without the catalytic converter as long as my memory serves me correctly. This answers a question that absolutely no one had, that question being what happens when you run a catalytic converter in your Chinese diesel heater while burning a waste motor oil mix? So what happens? Well, you still get a bunch of buildup inside of your burn chamber. The catalytic converter suffers from oxidation it uh, deteriorates extremely quickly and erodes away. As you guys can see, it didn't fare very well. So does this work? Well, it cleans up the exhaust. If you want to change one of these about every 10 hours of use, then uh, yeah, it works. But for now, I'm going to put the heater back together. I'm going to try to come up with some other scheme for making this work. I might build another one of these and style it a little bit different to try to make it work better. Or I might just install this in backwards, although I've already done that. So I think what I'm gonna do is install it exactly how I have been and shut my dang mouth. This is not a direct quote, but as Mitch Hedberg once said, you can't please everyone all the time and all the time those people watch my videos. But in all seriousness, if you liked what you saw, please remember to leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this nonsense, be sure to subscribe. I would really like to test an automotive catalytic converter in the future. That way we could stuff the whole burn tube full and hopefully it would run longer and actually work better as well. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments section and maybe I can make that happen. Remember, it was a viewer's suggestion that made this video happen, and also one that is going to make this one happen. So if you have an idea that you would like to see come to life, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. A big thanks to everyone who's purchased a heater using my affiliate link. For those of you who don't know, there is an affiliate link in the description below. If you purchase one of those heaters, it helps me out. I get a small kickback. There is a discount code VVS10 for $10 off or VV promo for 5% off store wide. I am going to be doing a unboxing slash test slash using the heck out of this ultrasonic cleaner in the background. If you guys want to see that, be sure to tune in for a future video. That is going to do it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.